Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and in this podcast, I'm going to talk about the animals. We're going to talk about kingdom animalia, and all of these things are animals. Sometimes we refer to them as just, uh, if we say animals, we're talking about vertebrates, but uh, this little water bear and insects and all these things are going to be animals, and you are an animal as well. If we look at the phylogeny of animals, these are eukaryotes, so we're looking at things that have a nucleus and organelles. We're going to be right here. Metazoa is the group that we're in. Uh, who are some things that you might even know around us? Fungi are going to be relatively close, or the amoebas are going to be relatively close, but we're pretty distant from green plants. If we look more detailed at the metazoas, uh, basically this is our phylogenetic tree. Um, it goes all the way from things like jellyfish uh, down here up to spiders here. And so we have a lot of different types of animals. Um, but we don't have to learn all of those. In other words, in my class, we're going to learn these invertebrates and we're going to learn these vertebrates. So these are going to be things that have a spinal cord and these are things that don't. And we'll get to those in just a second and how they're classified. But before we get to that, let's talk about some of the characteristics of animals. Well, we already said that they're eukaryotic, so they have a nuclei. Um, all of these are going to be multicellular and they're modal. In other words, they move around or they have stages in their life when they're going to move. Um, the opposite of modal is sessile, S-E-S-S-I-L-E. -S 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 -E. And so all of these are going to be movable. And then they're heterotrophs. In other words, they have to eat their food. And so there's a lot of things I just said. So basically, what are animals? They're multicellular, movable, heterotrophs. And if you can think of that, then you're pretty good on definition for animals. Um, they don't have a cell wall. And in general, they'll go through a blastula at some point in their development. Um, but we've got a lot of things that fill that role. So this would be a flatworm and an insect and some things that you don't even think of. So sponges, for example, are going to be uh, animals as well. So when did the animals show up? Well, they showed up 530 million years ago during a time that we call the Cambrian explosion. And the reason we call it an explosion is if we look in the rock layers in Canada, like in the Burgess Shale, if we look in China or or Greenland, what we find is at this one level, we see this explosion of all these different types of animals. They see segmentation and then they just take off. This would be an example of one of those organisms from the Cambrian explosion in this primitive sea. And the cool thing about the Cambrian explosion is all the organisms we have today can trace their ancestry right back to this one point. And so it shows uh, it's, it's, the animal group is monophyletic. So basically, I'm going to walk you through how we classify the invertebrates. These are things that don't have a vertebral column or don't have a spinal cord is the best way to think about it. And so the first thing that we do is we separate into those who have just a bag of tissues and those that have true tissues. And so those that have a bag of tissues are what are called sponges. So sponges are just an amalgam of a bunch of different uh, cells. Um, I've heard that you can actually pass a net through a sponge and it'll actually form on the other side. And so we group that as our first uh, classification group. Next way we divide them is based on their symmetry. Symmetry is basically um, how you look right to left or front to back. And so the two different types we have are what are called radial symmetry. So this would be an organism that no matter which way you cut it, they're going to have radial symmetry. Now we don't show that. In us, we're going to show what's called bilateral symmetry. And that basically means that you can't just cut us either which way, there's going to be a clear right side and a left side. And so this would be an organism that shows bilateral and this is radial symmetry. Uh, example of things that show radial symmetry would be the cnidarians. And so these are going to be things like jellyfish and also the sea anemone. So basically a jellyfish is like this and an anemone is like that. Um, next the way we group them is whether or not they're protostomes or deuterostomes. So basically, how does life form? You have a zygote. That zygote is undergoing cleavage, and it's eventually, remember, going to form a blastula. That blastula is simply a sphere of cells, and that eventually is going to fold in on one side, and it's going to form a gastrula. And so basically, that gastrula is going to fold in on itself like that, and that's called gastrulation. And so that hole, that initial hole, can form a mouth, and it forms a mouth, then you are a protostome, or it could form an anus. And if that first hole forms an anus, then you are a deuterostome. So sadly, we are deuterostomes. That means this hole formed an anus, and that's where we are. Um, the other only uh, deuterostomes are going to be the echinoderms, things like this sea star right here. If we break down the protostomes, protostomes are going to be 
broken into two groups, the acelomates and the coelomates. So basically when you get this folding in where you have a, a endoderm on the inside, mesoderm, and then ectoderm on the outside, sometimes we'll get a little coelom or a gap inside there or a space. Those that don't have that are called the acelomates. An example would be flatworms like a planaria. And then those that have coelomates are broken in further down into what are called pseudocoelomates. Those that have a coelom but it's not really surrounded by um, mesoderm, and then the other ones. So the other big groups are going to be um, the annelids, which are going to be the segmented worms like the leeches, the arthropods, those are going to be the segments as well. Those are going to be things like insects um, and crustaceans. And then finally we have this group, which are going to be the mollusks. And so if I were to classify humans, where are we? We're going to branch off this and we're going to go to the next page, which is going to be the chordates. But these are the invertebrates that you should know from sponges, which is going to be these, they live in the ocean, basically they're going to take in seawater and they're going to grab material out of it. The nadarians, a lot of these are predatory. The flatworms like the, um, the planaria is an example of that, but we also have these really gorgeous uh, flatworms that are going to be found in the ocean. Mollusks are going to be things that have a foot, and so those are going to be things that, uh, for example, would be this this clam right here, but it's also going to be things like a uh, snail, and it even goes all the way up to squid and octopus are going to be part of the mollusks. We then have the annelids, which are going to be the segmented worms, the arthropods, again, like I mentioned, are the insects, the spiders would be found in here. The nematodes are going to be the round worms, and then the echinoderms, which are going to be the uh, sea stars. We'd also put sea urchins in here as well. So those are the big groups of invertebrates. If we talk about the vertebrates, well, the vertebrates, the big ones you should know, if we go all the way here, would be some things that you're not familiar with, like the lancelets, uh, down to the lampreys. The cartilage fish, uh, chondrichthys, are going to be things like sharks, skates, rays. We then have the bony fish, the lobefin fish, which we thought most of them were extinct until we found the coelacanth the amphibians, the reptiles, the mammals. We put things like dinosaurs and birds in this group right here. But there are going to be defining character characteristics of each of these. In other words, what separates a lancelet from everything else? Well, they actually have a head as we move down here. If we go to the cartilage fish, um, they're going to have a jaw, but the lamprey is going to be a jawless fish, so they don't have that. We're going to get to lungs or lung derivative or things that come from that. And so these are characteristics that are found all the way down. So what separates mammals from reptiles is the ability to produce milk. Now these are simply derived characteristics or found in this group. Remember, this isn't how we classify life anymore. The way we classify life is generally using the DNA. And we're figuring out who's related to whom based on that um, analyzing DNA, figuring out similarities, and then basing it that way. But this is the group of vertebrates that you should be familiar with. There's way more than this, but it's a great start. That's animals, and I hope that's helpful.